In the year 934, Eric Bloodaxe went to war against two of his own brothers after a dispute of who should rule the land in eastern Norway. Eric was out of control when he wanted revenge. His rage made him determined to reach his goal, but this rage also had side effects, as his own people sometimes turned against him. He sailed day and night so that he would have the element of surprise. He then won the battle and killed both of his brothers, thereby gaining control of the area. Disputes like these were not uncommon in the Viking Age, but there was a strange pattern that repeated itself with Eric. His victims were often his own brothers. Eric Bloodaxe was the second king to rule all of Norway. He was known as a brutal and oppressive king, which is part of the reason why he was so unpopular. Eric inherited the throne from Harald Fairhair, who was pretty much the George Washington of Norway. Harald's influence spread so fast, so quickly, that he became the first king of all of Norway, a place that had previously been ruled by local chieftains. Harald had many sons, with many wives, and he wanted his sons to take over the kingdom after his death, so that they could control the land he had won in battle. Eric Bloodaxe was his favourite son, from his favourite wife. However, there was a problem. Eric was not the oldest son. He would only be the rightful ruler of Norway because Harald said so, not because custom dictated it. To please his other sons, Harald gave them local districts to rule over, while Eric would have power over all of them. However, this distribution worked better in theory than in practice. Many of his brothers gained too much power, and Eric was always worried that they would take over the throne while he ruled. His nickname, Bloodaxe, was given to him because he killed so many of them. Before Eric took over the throne, Harald trained him in the ways of war. At the age of 12, Eric received five warships, which he used to pillage and plunder with his warband around modern-day Russia, Denmark, Germany and the Netherlands. Eric would go on military duty for eight years. That was how long one had to practice in order to rank up to the equivalent of a modern officer in the armed forces. He had now earned his father's respect. Harald let him become a companion king during his final years, preparing him for what's to come. But Eric would not be the glorious king that Harald had envisioned. Even while Harald was still king, a local viceroy, Haraldan, had had enough of Eric killing his own brothers. So he went to the west and set fire to Eric's tent while he was sleeping. Luckily for him, Eric was sleeping in another tent. Important warriors such as Eric could lie about their whereabouts for this exact reason, a precautionary measure that saved his life that night. Harald and Eric were furious by the attempt, but the people from Trondelag were powerful and they were not on Eric's side. Haraldan was allowed to continue his local rule if he left Eric alone. Eric quickly became very unpopular as a king, not only because he murdered his own brothers, he had also abused the court system by overruling the court, and his wife Gunnhild was extremely unpopular. She was often depicted as an evil witch who cast spells on her enemies and killed many of them by mixing poisonous herbs into their drinks. Eric had only been king for two to three years when the people revolted against him, but they still wanted to hold on to Harald's system where the title of king was inherited. That's why they looked to Hakon, who also was Harald's son. He had been raised in England under the supervision of King Ethelstan. It was Sigurd from Trondelag who summoned Hakon to Norway. Sigurd had the title of Earl, which was the most powerful title in Norway after king. Some say that his power was equal or even stronger than the Harald and his sons, who mainly ruled on the west coast. However, Sigurd was more interested in a stable rule than to grab more power for himself. That is why he was looking for a good candidate, which he found in Hakon. Because Eric believed in the pagan gods, while Hakon was a Christian, the people of Trondelag were skeptical of the new king. A civil war was brewing. People were choosing sides and waiting for a great battle between the two brothers and their respective armies. However, when Hakon entered the country and was welcomed by Sigurd and his people, Eric fled the country 
avoiding any confrontation with the new king. There were still many rumors that a backlash would come from Eric and his followers. It was hard to believe that he would just accept his loss without there being any consequences. Ethelstan, king of England, was very aware of this. He was Hakon's foster father and would also benefit from peace in the region. So he offered Eric to become a viceroy in the region of Northumbria and York, which he ruled. Before Eric accepted, he had to let out his frustration by raiding the coastal towns of Scotland, Hebrides, Ireland and Shetland. People were still not sure of Eric's intentions until he finally accepted the offer from King Ethelstan. Eric spent the remaining 20 years of his life in England. His sons were always trying to avenge him by pillaging and plundering Norway, even with the help of Denmark. They did succeed after some time when Harald Greycloak took over the throne after the Battle of Vityar. But that wasn't until after Eric's death. Eric's personality is often described as a bloodthirsty Viking who was fierce on the battlefield. Although there were many people who wanted to paint a more unfavorable picture of him, especially after his death, he is sometimes portrayed as a weak and unintelligent man who always had to follow the command of his more intelligent wife. In Norway, many people thought of him as a corrupt tyrant who would use violence and cheap tricks to hold on to power, in contrast to the milder king Hakon, who succeeded him. However, the legend of the brutal warrior would survive for a long time as he died honorably on the battlefield while fighting in the Battle of Stainmoor. Gunnhild would soon after hire a skald to honor Eric's entrance into Valhalla.